It's been such a, a, a complicated year for all of us. But there have been, along with all of the horror and all of the sadness and all of the difficulties, there have obviously been wonderful and rewarding things. So as you look back on this year, what would you say has been the most rewarding part of it for you? Well, one of the most rewarding things for me is in the middle of all this, um, my wife and I had another baby. Oh. <laughs> so we, we had a new daughter in the middle of all this. So that's clearly top of my list. But I would say from a larger standpoint, there's been a coming together of the league. Uh, um, you know, of course, the, the, the teams are, are killer competitors on the floor, but they're all partners in the overall enterprise and same, you know, together with the players. And I'd say, you know, we, we to me, we had a very good relationship with Michelle Roberts, the executive director of the Players Association. I mentioned Chris Paul before and, and the players generally going into the pandemic. But what, you know, what was sort of, to me, heartwarming in many ways is that the community really came together once we had shut down. I mean, we quickly turned to what it would mean to restart. You know, as I've said before, it's 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 fairly straightforward to decide to shut down. The really complicated part is, can you find a safe and healthy way to continue? And I think, you know, you know a few weeks after we shut down and had an opportunity to better understand what was happening, um, that was the first time this this so-called bubble concept was introduced, and which which ultimately, obviously, we we moved to in Orlando and restarted the season with 22 teams. But it required enormous comprom you know enormous sacrifice and compromises from everyone. Obviously, the players agreeing to live on that campus for those teams that that went to the finals. It was a full three months, largely away from their families. You know, and friends, we needed the teams to agree to modified formats to finish the regular season. We needed financial investments um, from the teams in order to pull this off. A great partnership at Disney and their willingness to do it. And, and I think you, you, in many ways we saw the best of people during the most difficult of times. And I think that's continued, you know, largely in, into this season. Of course, it doesn't mean that everyone agrees with everything that we do even within the NBA community. But I think largely it's been a coming together, you know, of, of, of everyone who's in, involved in operating NBA basketball. And, and I'm particularly proud of the fact that collectively we have, a, we have found a way, a health, healthy and safe way to continue operating in appropriate balance of, you know, the, 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 the health of everyone involved and, and the economics, frankly, and I haven't shied away from that. I mean, that there's an economic crisis in this country as well. And it's, and it's absolutely meaningful, not just for the players and the coaches to have that ability to work, but there are thousands and thousands of jobs that are dependent on the NBA's ability to operate. Adam Silver is with me here. And so, again, the one-year anniversary of all of that. I have a limited time here, so let me get a, a couple of things in quickly if I can. We've been talking here a little bit about um, as far as the, the way the game itself is played and the proliferation of three-point shots as a result of analytics and, and the concern that some people have that that is becoming too prominent. Daryl Morey, of all people, who sort of began this revolution, has voiced that. I just wonder what, if any, conversations have been had relative to that and whether it is, it is viewed as something that is a concern. It's, it, it, I wouldn't say it rises to the level of a concern. I mean, I, I actually am, am, am really enjoying the game aesthetically right now. I've been a lifelong fan. I've been with the league for over 30 years, and, and I think we're, we're seeing some incredible basketball. Having said that, um, we're constantly looking at tinkering at the game. We've moved the three-point line. As you recall, we moved it in once, then we mm -hmm. moved it back out, then we moved it to a slightly different place on the floor. I think as the as the caliber of the shooting has gotten better. I mean, you know, you know, Bob Cousy said to me last year, you know, of all people, like he said, fans today don't understand the skill level of these players, what they're doing by shooting from that length on the floor with the kind of accuracy they do. Having said that, you want a diverse game. And and I think you recall, Mike, my early days in the league, everyone used to complain there was too much dunking mm -hmm. and that and that we had a lot of you know, a lot of great athletes in the league, but they weren't skilled in the way that you see a lot of these players now. So are we at the right balance? I'm sure there may be some adjustments we, we can make. I mean, I think, again, there's, there's so much great about the game right now, but the three-point line in particular is something we'll continue to look at. Okay, yeah, that's something we've talked about here, and, and perhaps at a later time when we have more time, we can do a little bit more in-depth. One more thing quickly, uh, Commissioner, before I let you go again, Adam Silver is with me. I saw that literally moments before you came on the air with me, you released a statement and made an announcement relative to the NBA investigation into the anti-Semitic slur that Myers Leonard of the Heat uttered 
during a recent video game that was live streamed. I'm sure many people have not seen that. Could you, uh, if you would, just share what decisions the league has reached and, and the thoughts that you shared? Um, a a absolutely. So Myers Leonard said something that was picked up on Twitch while he was engaged in an um, online video game. And, and somebody recorded it and put it out on social media. And, and I will only say that as part of our investigation, of course, we interview the player and, and the, the fact that or not as to whether a player is contrite and remorseful is an important factor for the league. I think in this case, Myers was incredibly um, remorseful. In fact, he's already met with the Anti-Defamation League. He did that yesterday. He's going to be, he, you know, it's not even something that, that we had to mandate because he volunteered it, that he would um, in participate in um, some sort of um, diversity um, program so he better understood these issues. I think he clearly, I, I accept his word that he didn't understand the import of what he was saying. And, and and he's paying a price for it. And as what we announced that he, he's being fined fifty thousand dollars, which happens to be my the limit of my authority for an act like that. But he's he, people may know he's injured. He got injured early this season, so he's out right now. So it obviously isn't all that meaningful to suspend him from a game right now. So we made a decision to, in essence, suspend him from engaging in team activities or being at the practice facility um, for a week. And then so and then plus he's going to agree to the training. So um, I. I I think that's appropriate in this case. I do think he's absolutely genuinely remorseful. It's something you, you never want to see in professional sports or, or anywhere in society. And I think it's important that when these incidents do happen, we talk about them and we talk about how um, hurtful those kinds of words can be for people in our society. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.